welcome to Jesse Bear Book Club. We like to talk about historical fiction, wild cards, Game of Thrones, and much, much more. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Today, I want to talk about Fallen Skies by Philippa Gregory, first published in 1993. This book is very different from Philippa Gregory's other works because it is set in the early 20th century. I first read this book when I was 16 and I really enjoyed it, even though it was set in a more modern time frame. I studied both the First World War, its aftermath, and the Roaring Twenties for my GCSE History Special Subject, and I enjoyed this book on two levels. I think Philippa Gregory captured this period really well. There are two main characters in this book, Lily Valance and her husband, Stephen Winters. Lily is refreshingly unsympathetic and unsentimental about the First World War, even though her father died in it. Yet this doesn't make her unlikable. She is very forward-thinking in many respects and a very modern woman, but she is not my favourite character in this book. Stephen Winters is fascinating. I loved him from the first POV chapter of his to the last. I have said many times on this channel that I really love a baddie, especially a bad character with understandable motives. He is a horrible human being who is suffering very badly from PTSD, but that doesn't make him any less intriguing in my opinion. I was very drawn to his relationship with Coventry, and especially his feelings of responsibility towards him. I also really enjoyed reading about Stephen's parents in this book, his father in particular as he is recovering from a stroke. Both Stephen's parents seem to have a golden child view of their oldest son Alexander, who died in the First World War and who they now consider a martyr. Stephen's resentment for his parents seems to stem from living in the shadow of his brother, and he feels that they resent him for being the son who lived. This world view makes him very bullheaded and determined to prove his worth to everyone around him. There is also Lily and Charlie's relationship to talk about. Lily works with Charlie and in fact he discovered and invented her singing act. Lily is so in love with him it hurts to read and the fact that Charlie has been badly hurt during the Great War below the belt and feels that he cannot love Lily back because of this breaks the reader's heart at least it broke mine. The ending of this book is happy and sad at the same time. When Lily and Charlie drive away together into the sunset with baby Christopher, Lily has been so badly treated by Stephen, she wants nothing but companionship and platonic love from Charlie, and because of that they can live together now as a family without sexual tension. It is a perfect storm of happy and unhappy. This book's overarching theme is to tell a convincing and frightening story of how powerless and vulnerable young women could be in the social and legal conditions of the early 20th century, and it does so very well. It also shows the female revolution in small, significant scenes. For example, Lily getting her hair cut short, her wearing trousers for the first time, her insistence on learning to drive, and most importantly, her managing through subterfuge to get her hands on birth control. The most important thing in this book I feel to remember is that Lily made one small bad romantic decision out of financial fear very quickly after her mother's death that landed her in an abusive marriage she will never be able to escape from. I am sure tens of thousands of women have found themselves in similar situations throughout history. I have to admit, I got tired about halfway through this novel, as there is a bit of a lull in the storytelling, but this is very common in books that are 500 pages or more. The conclusion of this novel finishes in a rush of activity that I enjoyed reading, and I thought there was an appropriate amount of build-up. I was shocked when Coventry spoke for the first time, and I was completely horrified when I found out what Stephen and Coventry had actually done in France. I don't want to give too much away, as it is such a good plot twist. It gave me shivers. This ending is very characteristic of Philippa Gregory's early work. Nearly all her earliest books, Wideacre, The Wise Woman, A Respectable Trade, 
end in a rush of activity, and are very fast-paced throughout the novel, and Fallen Skies is no different. I would really love to see this made into a mini-series or a TV movie. I think now would be an appropriate time, as it is a hundred years on from the Roaring Twenties. I think anybody who made this into a TV show or movie would have a captive audience, as the Roaring Twenties are always very interesting, as is the First World War. From what I have seen online, this book is very polarizing. People either love it or hate it. On Goodread, it has either five stars or one star. There is no in-between, but I personally really enjoyed it. I give this book an 8 out of 10, and after The Wise Woman, it is my favorite standalone novel of Philippa Gregory's. But what do you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, this is just my opinion. Please remember to help out and like this video if you enjoyed it. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lady Jessica Riddell and on Twitter at Jessums. I post on Twitter regularly about my videos. If you want to see more book reviews, character comparisons and fan theories, please subscribe to Jessie Bear Book Club. I try to post a new video at least once a week. See you next time on Jessie Bear Book Club. Bye!